Hi, my name is Joshua Robinson. I'm a senior in aerospace engineering, and I'm working on the design and characterization of a microparticle accelerator under the direction of Professor Alec Gallimore and Thomas Wu. Um, the specific uh, accelerator that I'm working on is a thruster called the NanoFET, which stands for Nanoparticle Field Extraction Thruster. Um, the thruster produces thrust by electrostatically charging and accelerating microparticles um, through stacked electrode gates. Uh, this is sort of a schematic that shows how the NanoFET works. Um, in green, we have the electric forces, which are counting at counteracting the black arrow, which is the gravitational forces. Um, and our piezoelectric feed system is demonstrated with the blue arrow, which is the inertial force, which gives the particle, which is shown as the circle, um, a kick from the electrode, which is shown as the rectangle, um, which are held together by the red arrow, which is the adhesion force. So the, the feed system just kind of helps aid in particle emission from our thruster. Um, the M1 thruster, which is our first thruster, we uh, performed vacuum testing on um, back in May and June, and we were able to track how the thruster performed using something called particle tracking velocimetry. And what this is is we take a laser and we shine it into the vacuum chamber, and it reflects off the particles that are being emitted and goes back into a high-speed camera, which we can later use to look back and back out um, the velocity of the particles. Um, what we realized when we ran these tests is that uh, particles being emitted in vacuum travel about 10 times faster than particles being emitted in atmosphere. Um, we also had the privilege and opportunity to test the M1 thruster um, in microgravity and a vacuum environment um, thanks to NASA's reduced gravity program. So we were able to uh, test our thrusters in a space-like environment and uh, demonstrate a fully automated thruster test bed, which was very, a very good experience. Um, there were several things we learned from operating the M1 thruster. Um, one of which was high voltage control. We had several arcing problems. Um, we had material outgassing problems. Uh, particle packing, which basically means particles were getting jammed up um, on the electrodes, which we think could be due to humidity. And we also had uh, problems with the robustness of some of our electrical connections. So following the testing um, of the M1 thruster, which we completed around late June, uh, my specific task became to develop and characterize what we're calling the M2 thruster. Um, so it has several new features, uh, which we've implemented uh, partially to just kind of increase the technology readiness level of the thruster and also to try and counteract some of the problems we had with the M1 thruster. So we're implementing a high voltage sieve, um, which is one of the electrodes, directly into um, the feed system, which prevents some more problems uh, with high voltage control, but it also uh, helps to improve the technology readiness level of the thruster. Um, and to do that, we're implementing some custom connections. Uh, we're also giving ourselves the ability to have multiple accelerating gates. Um, we're implementing strain gauges and thermocouples into the thruster to create a piezo feedback system to better control the way the thruster operates. And we're using quick disconnect terminals for mo more robust electrical connections. So this is just an overview of the M2 thruster. Um, up top, you can see we have our accelerating gates. Um, and below that, we have what we've labeled the gate, sieve, piezo, and spring block which are just the different chunks of the thruster, essentially. Um, and we're making sure that we're uh, making those out of vacuum-rated materials um, this time around to make sure that we don't have as much problem with material outgassing the vacuum. So this is kind of just a top-level view of how the back pressure and feed system work for the thruster. Um, what you see here is the spring block shown transparent so that you can see the particle reservoir, which is actually just a syringe um, that gets filled with particles. and there's a constant force spring on the back side of the syringe that pushes the particles up to the sieve, um, which is then charged and through the, the piezo actuation um, can then be emitted to create thrust. So one of the problems that we've run into with uh, having the sieve being at high voltage is we're creating tremendously strong electric fields. Um, we're running potentials as high as 40,000 volts um, over very um, small gap distances. And this creates a problem for our piezoelectric actuator because um, it, it's very susceptible to uh, damage from high electric fields. So we had to implement a grounding plane directly above the piezo um, to help protect it. And what this simulation uh, that, I, that I created shows is that essentially the electric fields in the piezo are on the order of 3,000 volts per meter, and the electric fields outside the grounding plane are on the order of 30 million volts per meter. So we've effectively shielded and protected the, the piezoelectric actuator. Um, we also have several means to help prevent um, arcing. So we're doing, trying to maintain good high voltage control by using um, strategically using ceramics and uh, kapton film throughout the, 
the thruster assembly to prevent line of sight between any um, high voltage and ground um, electrodes and try to prevent arcing. So this is just another simulation that I ran to show how we have a high voltage separated from um, the ground electrode by a very small distance um, with very high electric fields, um, but we're implementing that ceramic and, and capped on film to try to prevent arcing. Um, the electric connections on the M2 are much more robust than on the M1. Uh, we're using PC board, PCB board with quick disconnect terminals, so it's easy to remove because we'll be taking this in and out of the vacuum chamber a whole lot. Um, and it's a lot more robust as opposed to just screwing wires in the thruster, which we had previously done. Uh, my future work for this project, I need to test and calculate loading capabilities of our actuator. Um, I need to design and test a, a vacuum compatible gasket to prevent particle leakage because the particles are at high voltage and we don't want those um, finding their way out of the thruster. I need to finalize the electrical connection scheme and I also need to create another model um, electric potential model to evaluate the arcing problems that we had in the M1 thruster. Uh, future plans for myself, um, I intend to complete my Bachelor of Science in Aerospace Engineering here and uh, I also would like to uh, attend the ESCAS program in the AOSS department. Um, I've had a great experience this summer working with SURE and glad that I could do it. Thank you very much.